Hey guys. In Season 3 of the Majora's Mask Randomizer Tournament, there was a setting turned on called Chest Size Matches Contents, or officially in the Randomizer, Update Chests, but more colloquially it's known as Chest Size Matches Contents, or CSMC. And what this means is that in the Randomizer, in each seed, the size and appearance of the chest will match the type of item that is contained in the chest. And what this means is you can be pretty clever in terms of looking at chests and figuring out if you need to open them or not. So I figured I'd make this video and talk about every single chest in the game and any thoughts and ideas that at least I know of in terms of how you can peek them and speed up your races. So to begin, let's talk about the different types of chests that you can see. The first one is this one right here. We call these small brown chests. And as you can see, they are mostly brown with a black outline. And they will contain items such as rupees and heart pieces and other things that you generally don't need. Sometimes they'll be nice to have, but overall you can do away with not ever opening these chests. The second type of chest, same size, but has a gold outline instead of a black outline. And we call these small gilded chests. And in Season 3, the only items that you're ever going to find in these chests are intermediate trade items, such as Letter to Cafe, you know, Land Title Deed, Pendant of Memory, stuff like that. Generally stuff that you wouldn't consider it hard required in order to beat the seed, but sometimes you're going to need it. It's just going to be something small like, you know, paper or some other trade item like that. The third type of chest is what we call large gilded and as you can see it looks like the small gilded chest but obviously it's a little bit bigger uh, and this is what's gonna have major items so any kind of mask any upgrade unique items stuff like that as well as heart containers because there's only four in the game so just be aware that you will find heart containers in these chests sometimes but generally these are gonna have the the hard required items um, if you're coming from Ocarina of Time you'll notice that the size difference between these two chests is less significant an Ocarina of Time, and if you're looking from afar, it can sometimes be difficult to tell if a chest is large or small. Um, so make sure you're diligent in making sure that you can tell if a chest is big or small. Uh, I think the general rule people say is that uh, for small gilded chests, they're about the height of Deku Link, whereas with a large gilded chest, I will show you here, it'll basically look like if Deku Link were to jump into the chest, he would entirely fit inside it and his head goes to about the little middle line there the middle horizontal line and then just just for completeness this is never going to be shuffled anywhere else but uh there is a fourth type of chest that you will see i will show you really quick and this is the boss key chest again you don't really need to know what these look like because they're always going to be in their normal locations in Season 3, but again, just so you guys can see what it looks like, that's the Bosky chest. And it is, it is the same size as the large gilded chest, so... Those are the four types of chests that you will encounter in Season 3. And now I'm going to go through each one and talk about thoughts and ideas. There are two chests that you'll find in South Clocktown. The first one is the Straw Root chest over here. And obviously you can just look over and see what it is from here. But an interesting strategy that some people use is during the intro cutscene, uh, the same same way that you would peek the item up here, the South Clock Town Heart piece, after the initial camera cut, there's a shot where like the camera is over here, kind of, and it pans from right to left. And based on the camera angle, it's a little lower than this. If that chest is a large gilded chest, you can actually see it in the opening cutscene. So some people will look at that and say, oh, it's a big chest in this seed. Let's go open that right away because it could be, you know, something good like Goron Mask and you get an instant advantage. Um, what's important to know is if it is small brown or small gilded, you will not be able to see what it is in the opening cutscene. So just make sure that if you look at it and you see that it's a small chest, you might say, oh, I don't need to open it. But it could still be a small gilded chest, so watch out for that. The other chest in South Clocktown is this one up here, the one that only appears on day three, and obviously you can just look at it. There's a couple different spots that you can look at it. Generally, I do it if I'm like soaring from the owl, I come over here, and just before the wood turns into brick, 
I would look up. Well, that's in the way, but you can, you can definitely see what it is, even if it's a small chest. Um, pretty easily. You just have to be a little creative about your camera angle. Yeah, even, even here I can see that it is a small chest, and if it's big, it's going to be a lot more obvious. I'll talk briefly about sea up peaks here. If you don't know what a sea up peak is, um, it's something that's pretty common to rando, and it's something that MMR players have known how to do for a long time, because you can peak freestanding items like this, but um, essentially what you do is you roll, and towards the end of the roll, you press C up, and if you time it right, you can kind of see through walls. It's, it's obviously pretty limited in what you can see, but essentially you're forcing Link's head through the wall a little bit. And this is one example of it, where you can look at the chest in East Clocktown over here. I actually don't think this peak is particularly useful. Generally, I'll just do the movement normally, and then when I'm up here, I can just look at it and see. But if you find yourself in a position where you just happen to be in this part of East Clocktown during your opener, uh, I think it might be useful to take a look at that, and you can save a couple seconds on movement. Um, it should be said that some C-Up peaks are also way easier with Zora, uh, the, typically for chests that are higher up. You can do that pretty easily. Uh, the next chest in East Clock Town that you can peek is the Treasure Chest minigame. And this one's really nice because you can see right away once the minigame starts if the chest is big or small. Obviously this is vanilla so it's just going to be a big gilded, but if it's a small brown chest you'll be able to see that right away and you just leave. Which is really nice. As far as stock pot in goes, obviously there's only the two chests, one in the knife chamber and one in the staff room. Unfortunately, even though you can see up peek into the rooms, the chests don't actually load until you open the door. So there's no way to peek these chests. Unfortunate because you can see up peek into the room, but like I said before, the chests will not be loaded until you actually go through the door. The last chest that could be peaked in the Clock Town area, the East Clock Town area, is the Bomber's Hideout chest. And this one's a little tricky, so I'll explain how I do it. So, at the beginning hallway, there's this part where it slants down, where I'm standing right now, and then eventually it straightens out, and now it's just a horizontal walkway. So, right where the slanted part meets the straight part, right around here, you can see a peek through the wall that was a little late, and you can see the chest. If you look directly at it, the chest is not going to appear. You'll find this is true with a couple of peaks, and I don't exactly know why this is the way it is. It's just the weird way that MM renders things. But if you look a little bit to the left, you should be able to see the chest there. Behind, you can see the bomb wall to the right, right, right beside where the torch is, uh, but you can see past it, obviously. So just be careful. The reason why you do it over there and not over here is because if you're too straight on, even though, even if the chest would render, the wall is going to block it. So you want to make sure that you're C-up peeking well to the left and look a little bit to the left. Like right here is fine, as you can see again. Like as soon as I get directly looking at the chest, it disappears. So make sure you're looking not directly at it. I'm not going to cover chests that are in grottos or ones that spawn after killing enemies, such as Dodongo Grotto or P Hat Grotto. But just know that you can just look over and see the chest from the grotto. Nothing more to it. As far as Termina Field goes, there's a couple things we can talk about. Um, I think the most important peak in this general area is the stump chest, because it's not available right away. You need either bean, bottle, or storms, and or you can also poke shot the chest. But it's really nice that you can just look at it and see what it is right away. Obviously there's the grotto there, and then this chest in the grass you can also take a look at. Not that important, but will save you a little bit of time in your opener, especially if in-game is tight. You're trying to route in either room key or blast mask or something like that. Also this chest here, even if you don't have Zora, you can just take a look and see what it is. So that's also really nice. And that's pretty much it for Termina Field, other than just, you know, the generic grotto chests. There's not a ton, but those peaks do end up saving a lot of time when you're just starting out the game and you're going around Termina Field. 
Additionally, one thing I like to do when I'm going around Terminate Field for the first time uh, is take a look at this chest. There's a couple spots you can do it. Um, this corner is a really easy spot to just go and look at the chest. Uh, however, if you just happen to be going to Graveyard, let's say you get Captain Sad early and you just want to go to Graveyard very early, um, one way you might want to do that is using Epona, here she comes. Oh, and I guess another spot where you can peek this chest pretty easily is right when you load in this area. You can roll back once and look at it and you can see it pretty clearly. Just be careful because the loading zone is like right there, so if you go too far, you'll touch it. But let's say you're coming in with a Pona and you're not able to do a CF peek. Even if you don't have bow yet, you can press the B button to pull out a bow and this will let you like turn the camera around and you can see the chest as you're walking by. So that's one really, really useful way of peeking that chest. And I guess while we're here, let's talk about Graveyard. The chests underneath, inside the graves, obviously not a ton of things you can do in order to peek it. However, there is one chest in the graveyard that does have a very nice peek, and does make early graveyard plays just a little bit better. Excuse the cutscene here. Uh, but the chest I'm talking about is the Captain Kita chest, and normally you have to kill Captain Kita, use Sonata of Awakening, and kill Kita, however you want to do that. But you can also do a C up peek here. And you can just see the chests through the wall. There's a couple spots you can do it from. I usually do it right here, right around to the right of the door, but you can also do it here against this wall. This one's a little bit more finicky, but you can see the chest pretty easily from any which way that you want to do it. In the doggy racetrack, there's one chest up on the straw roof here. Um, it's fairly straightforward that you can get to the other side and just peek it, but uh, it might be useful to know that the chest clips through the, the roof, ceiling, whatever, just a little bit. And if it's large and gilded, you can just see the chest fairly easily just by looking at it from here. Not particularly useful, but interesting thing to note. As far as the south goes, unfortunately there's not too many chests in order to be peaked, but one that's really, really useful is the chest here in Bean Grotto. Normally you need either, again, Bean or Bottle or Storms, or you can hook the chest. But with CSMC you can obviously just see up and look at it from the start, which is really useful. The only other chests that are really useful in the south area, excluding the temple obviously, is in Woodfall. From the starting area you can look over and see this chest, as well as the what's normally the heartbeat chest over here. So if you don't have hook, you can look at that and see if it's small brown. You don't have to go all the way around Woodfall in order to be able to know what that chest has or what kind of item it has. And then obviously the last chest over here as well. You can just see what it is as you're doing normal movement through Woodfall. You can just look over and see it from whichever direction you're coming from and know what's in that chest as well. Moving on to the north, there's a couple of chests that you can peek in Twin Islands. This first one here, obviously you can see it. Um, even in the winter time, you can peek this chest. You can just see through the ice and you're able to tell if the chest is gilded or not. Um, there's another underwater chest which unfortunately is not loaded in the winter time, so this is a springtime only peak. But if you don't have Zora after clearing Snowhead, uh, there's two ways you can do it. The first is from here. You need to blow up the Keg Rock here in order to do this peak, so this is only really useful if you're setting up for Keg Trial or you know Goron Race is required or you're just doing Goron Race. But you can see a peak right here and you can see the chest pretty easily. Again, I don't think this is great because there's, you know, you can only peek this if you have Powder Keg. So there is an alternative if you don't have Zora. Um, you can just see the chest through the alcove here. You just need to get the right angle and you can see the chest pretty clearly just by swimming around. You do have to be careful of the Skullfish, um, but the angle's not that hard. The position's not that precise. You can see it from a wide range of positions. And then the only thing that really sucks about this one is that you have to swim back, but it doesn't take that long. So, pretty useful. 
Again, it's a springtime only check, so or springtime only peak. The chest is not loaded during the winter time. Uh, but this is another one that works regardless of the season. Uh, let's say you have fire arrows or hot spring water, but you don't have any sort of explosives. You walk up to this rock, turn around, target, and let go. It's actually way easier as human. Yeah, you can just see through the rock and see what size the chest is. Now, similarly, in uh, in Lens Cave, just give me a sec here to get back to winter. Yeah, so this is Lens Cave here. Um, you can also peek the chest under a rock here. Again, I think it's a lot easier as human. You just walk up to the rock, turn around, target, and let go, and you see the chest clear as day there. Moving on to the west, uh, Coast unfortunately does not have any chests that can be peaked, but in Zora Cape, there are two chests that require the hookshot and are up on ledges. One is up here, and obviously from the same position that you would hookshot this tree to get over there, uh, you can just see up and look and see what that chest is. The second one unfortunately is not as easy to be peaked, but one way that we do know of is let's say you, you have the hookshot and you're up here and you open this first chest. You stand about this corner, same as the uh, the bomber's hideout chest. If you're looking towards the chest, it's on this ledge here, then it won't appear. But if you turn the camera so it's in the peripheral view, you can see the chest. You see, it's a little, little bit precise, but you can see the chest just as long as you point the camera well away from it and the weird way that MM renders stuff, you can see what that chest is. Again, uh, this one you can peek without a hookshot, you just peek from the ground. This one, you, you need a hookshot in order to do it. And also, let's say you just want to jump off here, uh, you can also eventually see what that chest is. It's a little tight, I would recommend the C-up method over that. Um, and then, as far as cape goes, there's only other one chest that you can look at. Let's just say you're, you're, you're checking out the grotto here, anything else you might want to be doing. There is the underwater chest, so if you don't have Zora, you can peek this chest. Um, just be aware that chests underwater, the water does tend to distort the appearance of the chest just a little bit. So you do need to be really careful. I've definitely missed seeing big chests that were, you know, I thought were small or were not gilded. Um, this chest here, obviously, you can... If you if you swim a little bit close to the chest, you can see it. Uh, this isn't great, unless you're planning on swimming to cape as, or haul as human. Um, then it might be a good idea. Just because you jump out of the water and then you can see what the chest is. But there are a couple of other ways in order to see this chest that are a little better. Let's say if you want to soar from here, you don't want to bother swimming over to haul. Um... This, unfortunately, does not work as well. You can kind of see it, like, yeah, you can just see the chest in the corner there. But again, the water kind of distorts it, so it's not exactly clear. Uh, there is one other way that you can do without Zora, uh, which is to just walk off with uh, Deku, and you can get pretty close. You can see what the chest is pretty well. My capture's not doing it super justice, but I can definitely tell that this is a small brown chest. And I should be able to tell if it is gilded. And then, once you void out as Deku, you're here, you can just pull out Ocarina or do whatever else that you want to do with the rest of Cape, and it's a nice little way to peek that chest as well. In Pirate Fortress exterior, the best way that you can peek the chests here is just to swim close to them. Again, water tends to distort the appearance of chests just a little bit. I've definitely, this chest specifically, I've seen it render and assume that it's small brown, and then upon closer inspection, it's actually gilded. Um, so just make sure as you're, you're swimming, you're, you're absolutely sure you're seeing the right kind of chest. Just get a little bit closer than, you know, you would think, just to make sure that it's actually the kind of chest that you think it is. Yeah, not really much to say about these ones, though. You just swim by. This one, unfortunately, there's not a great way to see it without actually swimming through the log. There's not really a single consistent way that people use to look at this chest. Uh, I generally just, as I'm doing movement through this room as I would normally, I just try to catch a glimpse of the chest. 
Again, you can you can do it from a wide variety of angles. All the walls are see-through. Like you can see it here, you can see it here, and then if I still am not confident, right here I can, you know, just take one last look before I move on to the rest of the room. This is perhaps one of the more technical peaks in the game that you can do. But you can see every single item in PF Sewers in this room from the starting area. For the heart piece, this isn't a chest, but the heart piece in the cage you can just see by holding target when you enter the room and just backing into the corner. Uh, as for the first chest, if you are comfortable doing ESS turns, then you can do two ESS to the left here. Hold target, and you can kind of see it there. You need to wait for the camera to zoom out a little, and then you can target again, you can see that chest just barely there and see if it's gilded or not and then as for the last chest you can then do a see up peek through the wall uh if you're used to the normal see up peak timing this doesn't work that well as you can see you can only barely just see it uh, i find that this works just a little bit better if you slightly delay the see up input based on what you would normally be used to and it works a lot better from the corner but if you're having trouble with that, you can also just come over here and peek the chest from here, and then you should be able to see it. Uh, maybe not from this. There are five chests in Pirate's Fortress interior. First two are fairly straightforward to peek. The one in the fish tank over in that region, you just take a look at, as well as the well-guarded chest that's over there. Again, those are just ones where you go into the room and you can see the chest right away. Um, there are two chests over here, one of which is down in the corner here. I find if I have hookshot, the easiest way to peek this one is simply to just do the room normally. Hookshot this target. And you can see the chest right there. Very nice. This chest over here, you can look over and see, but let's say we're coming here without hookshot. Uh, this is a little bit precise and requires, I think it's a frame perfect see up peek here. You just barely see that chest. Uh, Again, this is useful. If, if you find this one too difficult, I don't really think it's worth wasting your time, but yeah, I can just barely see in the top right corner there what that chest is. And then the last chest, which is the hookshot chest. Let's say we're coming here without bow or magic and deco and we can't destroy the beehive. Uh, you can still just look through here and see this chest, either through the bars here, or you can also see up peek it. Um, so that's fairly useful if you're coming to PF without all the required items in order to clear it. There are two chests in Pinnacle Rock, both of which can be peeked without even killing the sea snakes. The upper one, you can just see it from afar. You don't even need to get that close. You can see it from quite a distance. It doesn't really matter where you are. Just get a camera angle where you can see the chest and you should be able to see it. The second chest is a little bit more picky. Uh, you can't just look directly at it and have the chest render. Uh, you either have to do the same trick of pointing the camera slightly away in your periphery. You can see it. There you go. But if you find that to be a little bit slow or tricky, you can also just see up and look at it directly. But as you can see, if I'm just looking at it normally, the chest isn't going to render. You have to turn the camera a little bit away or do a see up peek. There's not much in terms of chests that can be peeked in the Icona region, so it's time to move on to the dungeons, starting with Woodfall. In Season 3, we turned on Stray Fairy Chests but not freestanding straight fairies. So this one right here, this is not going to show up in rando. But this one over here is in a chest, and you can just look over and see that one. Woodfall doesn't have too much in terms of chests that you can peek. One that is kind of useful, at least from the routing side of things, is the switch chest over here. Uh, because obviously you can just see the chest spawn and determine if you need to go back and get it, or you can do whatever else you want to do with the dungeon. As far as the rest of the chest, there's a stray fairy chest up on the second floor in the dark room, but you need to kill all the bows there in order to spawn it, so not really a useful peek there. 
And the rest of the chests in the dungeon, the only one that's really worth mentioning is the small key chest here. Again, you can just look over and see it. You don't have to actually commit to that platform. But that's really it in terms of Woodfall. There's not too much in terms of chests that could be peaked. For Snowhead Temple, I'm not going to cover any of the chests that spawn after you press a switch or kill an enemy. Those are fairly obvious. Um, but there are a couple of chests that are interesting to point out. The first one is the chest up in the alcove here that normally you need to get up to the second floor of Snowhead and then jump across the platforms. But if you have Zora, this C up peak works. See the chest fairly easily with a C up peak. But let's say you don't have Zora. You can walk into the pillar, and if you time the C up press right, you can see what the chest is as well. I think that'll probably not work, yeah. I mean, generally I'd look for Goron clipping into the pillar just a little bit. That's not going to work. But you generally want to walk into the pillar, and if you see the arm clip in a little bit, you can peek the chest. So, it's not going to work every time, but keep trying, and if you time the C up peek right, um, you can see it with Goron. Again, this isn't going to work. Give me a sec here. That probably won't work. There we go, yeah. You can generally tell, based on what Goron Link visually looks like as you're see upping if you got it or not. I generally look for one of his arms clipping into the pillar, and that'll help. Um, once you've melted the ice here from this door, if you have Zora, you can actually walk up against this wall without falling off. And if you do a see up peak here, um, you can look up and to the right, and you can see this chest here, which is the invisible Alco chest. And this is really nice because you don't have to commit to going into this alcove. You can just see what the chest is from the bottom floor, which is really nice. Um, as well, normally there's ice here. You're not usually going to be here unless you don't have Zora, you don't have Hookshot. Um, this wall is unfortunately in the way, but on the upper floor, right where you spawn in, you can do a see up peak here. And you can see this chest as well. For Great Bay Temple, there are quite a few chests that you can peek. One of which is the chest up here in the green turnkey room. There's a chest in the center on the second floor. There's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, right from the starting position, from when you open the door in this room, you can hook this target, hold target, and you can see the chest there. Um, a lot of people don't like that though because you waste a lot of time going up and then back down and if the chest is big then you know you, you waste time when you could just do something like this like actually get up here and then if the chest is big you can go over and get it and if not drop down and do the green turn key however you want to do it. Um, but the peak that I like to do for this room is after I've turned this green turn key you can walk over to the pipe. You need to be careful not to fall off, but on the left corner here, you can see the chest just barely, um, but this is what a small brown chest would look like, and if the chest is gilded or large and gilded, you will absolutely be able to tell what this is. Just make sure you're pretty confident that you can see that chest properly. And if you don't like that peak, you can just do the hookshot one that I just described. This room, which we MMR runners colloquially refer to as the Iceless Room, has two chests that are fairly easy to peek. There's a number of different ways that I've seen people do it. Um, but what I would recommend for this room is just doing Iceless normally, or, you know, shoot the Ice Arrow if you need to. And then go through this door and go back out. And this way, when you're done peeking the chests, you can void into the water as Goron and you'll be right back here and you can continue on with the remainder of the dungeon. But, um, one chest is right here, and I've seen a couple different ways people do this. One way, obviously, is just to shoot the pillar of water, and you can walk over and just look at the chest, but one thing that I have seen people do, and this is a bit of an advanced strategy here, but pull a bomb as soon as you're in the room, 
target the wall, get over to the edge. You can do this kind of movement here. And you can see what the chest is, and if you're good, I'm not, but I've seen some people who are able to get onto this propeller and just hook the chest like that. And if you can do that, I'm not going to show it off in this video just because I don't want to try it a million times, but you can see what this chest is pretty easily. And if you get up here, you can just look over and see the other chest from here, and then Goron Void or go get the chest. Do whatever you need to do. And let's say you fall down at any point, um, you can still peek the second chest pretty easily from over here. You can see you can kind of see it if you keep this camera angle, and I can see what that chest is as we're ascending. And then the second chest, you can do a see up peek or something to see it if you really want. But there's there's plenty of ways to just get over to that alcove and get a good view of it and see what that chest is. In the next room, the seesaw room, there's one last chest that you can see from a variety of different angles. And generally, just as I'm doing movement through the room, I kind of try to catch a glimpse of it. You can kind of see it here. Um, that's not exactly the best view of it. Uh, as you're attending the seesaw here, if you're going backwards, I can see the chest clears day there. And then whatever, do whatever else. Movement. And if you still haven't seen it, by the time you're over here, you can just peek it from here as well. Or any just any way you want to do it, you can see through this wall, so it's not that hard to see where that chest is. There's a lot going on with Stone Tower Temple. There's a lot to talk about, not just because of the sheer number of chests that are in this dungeon, but also because, you know, this dungeon's in two parts where you flip it upside down, and you can see chests on the ceiling that normally would be, you know, kind of useless, but with CSMC it's actually really useful to see the chest spawn on the other side of the dungeon, just helps with routing. I'm not going to talk about how to route the dungeon, uh, but I will talk about certain options that people do for routing and how you might want to include certain peaks. Um, so let's start with Uninverted Stone Tower Temple. And I guess one thing, if you're coming from Ocarina of Time, you may know that there's a chest in Forest Temple that's on the wall, and it's not actually, you know, a chest. It's, it's collision textured to look like a chest. Of course, that doesn't adhere to the rules of CSMC. This is not the case in Majora's Mask. You don't need to worry about that. If you see a big chest on the ceiling, it is a big chest regardless. So don't worry about that at all. Uh, the first chest that's useful if you're coming from an uninverted stone tower is this one, the sun switch. You can hit the sun switch from either side, but it's useful to hit that one and see what that chest is and know if you're going to have to open it when you go to the, uh, the inverted side. Um... This is what we recall the Elegy Maze and in Inverted Stone Tower Temple, it is the Death Armos Maze. And there's a chest here that's in a ring of fire. You have to hit the switch, play Elegy, or just hook, hook shot the chest, whatever you want to do. But if you're coming through Elegy Maze, it's worth a peek here because you need to go over here anyway. And this is if you don't have light arrows, you're going to have to go through the Elegy Maze. But if you do have light arrows, it's up to you if you want to take a quick dip over here to take a look at that chest and then potentially skip or know that you have to do the Death Armos Maze. But if you do have light arrows, typically you're going to route the dungeon by going right first. And contradictory to what I just said, let's say you don't have light arrows, you can still peek the compass chest here with a well-timed see up peek, just like that. But continuing on, let's just assume we're doing the dungeon with light arrows in hand, we can just go over this way. There's another ch there are actually two chests in this room that we can peek from the uninverted side. The first is the... Oh, hello, bomb shoot. There's the frozen ice switch here, which is a chest that spawns in the inverted side, but you can hit the switch from either side. So, very useful to see what that chest is as well. And same for the underwater switch chest here. This is one of the only chests that you have to spawn in uninverted side and then go to the inverted to open it. So you don't really have a choice here. You have to see this chest from uninverted first. So that's one case where you might want to route uninverted first. Again, I'm not going to deliberate on which one is better, but that is one argument for doing uninverted first. Small key chest here, you just kind of look at it. And there's a switch here that if you hit the switch, it'll show a cutscene of the chest spawning on the other side, so you can peek that one really fast. And as far as this room goes, if I can get that jump, 
To the left, in the next room, is the Elegy Maze that I mentioned earlier. And I was hoping there might be a peek for the chest just by doing a C up peek here so you don't have to take a detour through Elegy Maze. But unfortunately, there's a wall in the way and it is well in front of the chest. There's not really an angle trick that I know of in order to see that chest. So unfortunately, there's no C up peek here. There are three chests down in the basement here. If you face this way, you will be facing one of the chests as you fall. But unfortunately, due to the glare, depending on your emulator, it's not exactly easy to see what that chest is. So, you probably you're just going to have to hook up here. And this is also not really useful in my opinion, but let's say for whatever reason you're here without light arrows, without mirror shield. You target the wall here, you can see the map chest as well, which is kind of useful, I guess. Moving on to the last section of Uninverted Stone Tower Temple. If you don't want to do the mirror shield puzzle here, if you don't have light arrows, for example, it is possible to just see this chest as well with a see-up peak, which is quite useful. For this room, there are two chests, one of which you can just turn to the left and see through the flames and see if it's big or not. The other chest, on the other hand, is a little bit trickier. There's not really like a see up peak you can do, but if you have Deku, you can kind of just turn around and briefly get a glimpse of the chest here if you angle the camera right. Uh, just make sure you're able to orient yourself so that you can do the rest of the room without too much trouble. As far as the rest of the chests go in Uneverted Stone Tower Temple, um, they are chests that spawn from that side and can be opened on that side, so I'm not really going to waste time talking about those. Those are pretty self-explanatory in terms of how you peek. So now I'm going to approach Inverted Stone Tower Temple, uh, again, under the presumption that we are doing this side first. So if you decide Inverted Stone Tower is the way to go first and then Uninverted, then these are some peaks that you might find useful. The first is the Eye Switch here, which is a chest that spawns on uninverted side, but you can peek from inverted, so that's really nice and quick. Um, there are a couple ways you can do like a bomb long jump to get over here and hit this switch. Uh, regardless of if you hit this switch now or if you hit it, you know, going through the dungeon normally and coming from this door, uh, this is another one that spawns that can be opened on the uninverted side, but you have to spawn it from inverted. So, in contrast to the underwater switch from in Uninverted Stone Tower Temple, this is one argument for why you might want to do Inverted first. But again, I'm not here to deliberate, I'm just telling you all the options that you have. Similarly, so Compass Chest is over here. Again, you will have Light Arrows at this point. I don't have them equipped, but you will have Light Arrows if you're coming into Inverted Stone Tower Temple in Season 3. So, as you might expect, Compass Chest is peekable over here. You can see what it is very quickly. And then the next chest to talk about in this room is the Sun Switch chest. I didn't talk about it in Uninverted because it's one that spawns in Uninverted, so it's one that you just want to spawn and then immediately go grab. But if you're coming inverted side first, obviously you hit the Sun Switch here and you can peek it. From the Igor Bridge, you can take a look at the small key chest, which is in the uninverted side, is the river room. So that one's really quick and easy to see. Moving on here, we have the Death Armos slash Elegy Maze over there. And then in the Wizrobe room, there are a couple of chests that you can take a look at as well. We'll just wait for the cutscene here. But that little alcove that the Wizrobe is spawning in, you can see right there, that's that's map chest. That's the one that I looked at through the, the wall with the sunblock earlier. Um, and then the other one, the alcove chest, is just right here that you can take a look at as well. The final chest in Inverted Stone Tower that's worth mentioning is in the pre-Twin Mold room. And it's just as simple as hitting the switch, which you need to do anyway to get through this room. But if you're coming inverted side first, you can see what this chest is right away and know if you need to go grab it or not. 
that's the end of the CSMC video. I hope this was straightforward, easy to follow, and I hope you guys learned something new today. Thank you so much.